Okay, so now let's go to chapter 6. Let's talk about chapter 6. This is kind of where we're shifting gears. We've been working a lot with calculations, heavy calculations, all that dimensional analysis. There are a few minor calculations in chapter 6, but then that's pretty much it. This is where we shift gears now and go back to atoms and electrons and protons. In fact, we're going to spend the rest of the course working on with electrons, where they are, how they behave, what we do with them, what bonds we form with them. So our calculations, of those of you that like calculations, it's going to be like, oh darn. But those of you that don't do well with calculations, you'll be like, yes, because we're moving away from that now. And in fact, chapter 7, it might be a good time to get started on chapter 7 because there's just a lot of memorization. There just really isn't any math at all in chapter 7. So some of us may really like that. Okay, so let's talk about chapter 6. So now we're going to focus on the electron. Okay, so we're moving away from what we've been talking about. And we're going to go back to chapter 2. So you remember we started off in chapter 2. We said, hey, there's an atom. You remember the first guy that said, hey, there's an atom. Who was that theory? Who was that? Dalton. Dalton. You remember Dalton said, hey, we got an atom. That's a new thing. Okay, so that was Dalton. So let's we're just kind of a quick review. We started off with saying, hey, we have an atom and it's indivisible, but later on we learned there were parts to it, like J.J. Thompson, right? And we learned that there were what? Electrons? Mm -hmm. So the question was, is, hey, where do you put those electrons? He said, oh, they're just sprinkled in there like raisins in a pudding. And then who comes along to prove that or disprove that? Do you remember? Rutherford. Rutherford. And what did he find? There's a positive... Yeah, positive nucleus. So that's where we left off. We said, hey, there's a positive nucleus in the center. And you remember, that's like really small. It's like the marble on a 50-yard line, the rest of the stadium. Okay, that's where we left the model. We said, well, the electrons are everywhere else. <laughs> and we just kind of left it at that. Well, now we're going to talk about, hey, where, what are those electrons? Where are they? What are they doing? The whole rest of the atom is huge. Where are all the electrons and what are they doing? That's what we're going to focus on now. Okay, so we're going to pick up from here. We're going to talk about some other models, like Bohr's model and some other models, as we work our way toward our current quantum model of the atom. Now, before we can understand about that model and electrons, we need to understand about light, light waves. So we're going to just talk just a minute about light. You guys know light. Light's energy, isn't it? Does light have mass? No, you guys know light's energy, right? There's no mass to it. It's not like a particle. Okay, so energy, light is a form of energy, and we call that electromagnetic radiation, don't we? Okay, so it's electromagnetic, electro, electric field, magnetic field, perpendicular to each other, one affects the other, combined together, they form electromagnetic radiation. That's why we call that. And light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. And we say that light travels, light travels in what? Waves. Okay, you guys know waves, right? We've seen waves. You guys know about waves. Okay. So we can use certain things to describe waves, and that's what we want to talk about. Um, in physics, those of us that had physics, we might have seen waves talking about amplitude. Okay, so we're not going to talk about amplitude, but we're going to talk about a couple other things that we're going to use to describe a wave. One of them is a wavelength. Okay, a wavelength is from, you know, you can pick two spots, so we're going to pick the two peaks. It's the distance between the peaks. Okay, so that's wavelength. That's wavelength, and it's given the symbol lambda. That symbol is called lambda. It looks like that. It's the distance between two peaks. Now, lambda, which is wavelength, so let's write that up here, it's wavelength. Usually we talk about that in nanometers or meters. Nanometers or meters. Ooh, you guys remember the conversion between nanometers and meters? Yes, what's the conversion between nanometers and meters? 10 to, the, 10 to the 9th, right? Nano 9, nano 9. Okay, so 
one meter has 10 to the 9 nanometers. And you can look that conversion up, but that's the one that we'll be using. 9 nano, 10 to the 9th nanometers. Okay, so that's wavelength. Now, another thing that we talk about is frequency. Is how many, as this wave travels along, how many of those peaks are going by us? That's frequency. How many peaks are going to be traveling by per second? Okay, so we're going to give that the symbol nu, which is kind of like an italics V. That's called nu. And what that is, is that's the frequency. Okay, how do we measure frequency? It's the number of peaks, for example, that are going by, a number of cycles that are going by per second. So we're going to say per second, 1 over s. That's how we would indicate frequency. Or s to the minus 1. You guys know that's the same thing. s to the minus 1 is the same as 1 over s? Yeah, that's the same thing. Or we might call it a hertz. That means per second as well, and abbreviation is HZ. Have you heard of the term hertz, megahertz? Like, oh, a megahertz, what, radio station? Well, they're telling you the frequency of which they're broadcasting because radio waves is also another form of electromagnetic radiation. Now, these waves travel at a speed. Aren't they moving? Okay, they're moving at a speed. What is that speed? That speed is a constant, and we're going to give that a C. The letter C is going to indicate the speed. And we're going to call that, you may have heard this before, speed of what? Speed of light. We heard that before? Speed of light? Yeah, we've heard speed of light. Now, we say light because light is a form of electromagnetic radiation, but really all electrotype the magnetic radiation types travel at that same speed. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're a microwave, an infrared, radio wave, whatever wave that we're talking about, they all travel at that same speed, which would be, do you guys, anybody know what's the speed of light? Yep, 3 times 10 to the 8th, and what units is that? Meters. Okay, it's meters per second. Okay, so it's meters per second. That's the speed of light. Um, if you were to think, of, to put that in perspective, it takes... If you were to go from the Earth to the Moon and come back, traveling at that speed, it would take you two and a half seconds. Zip there, zip back. Okay, that takes you two and a half, two and a half seconds. So that kind of tells you how fast that is. Now, frequency and wavelength are related together. And they're also related to energy. So let's talk about how they're related together. And I think the easiest way is just for you to see it. So I need someone to help me with the sinky. So I need one person to hold one end of it and we're going to make some waves. And I want you to think about wavelength and I want you to think about frequency. And we'll talk about energy as well. So I need one person to hold one end of this for me. Who would like to hold that? Okay, Francesca, that's awesome. Um, let's see, let's do it. Let's do it over here. Can you guys see? If you can't see, stand up and come look. Okay, so back up to the door there. Okay, so we're going to do it on the ground. So I want you Get down. Okay, can you guys, you guys need to come over here and see the waves. Okay. Okay, can you guys see? Because we're going to talk about waves and frequency and wavelength. Okay, so we're going to talk about how many peaks are going by, um, we'll say Tracy's backpack over here. Okay? And then I want you to look at the frequency as well as the wavelength. What did we say the wavelength was? What is the wavelength? The distance between what? Two peaks. Two peaks. Okay. All right. Can you see the waves? All right. Can you see the distance between the peaks? Okay. So how many of those wavelength those are going by the backpack over here? Not very many, right? Yeah, just one or two. Yeah, one. Okay. Do you see the wavelength is very large, right? Okay. Now what happens? Okay, what changed? The wavelength, what happened to the wavelength? What happened to the wavelength? It gets smaller. Okay, what happens to the frequency? It increases, so how are they related? Are they inversely or directly? Big? Okay, now I'll slow it down. What kind of wavelength is this? 
It's a big wavelength, right? And what's the frequency? Less. Less. So they're inversely, right? Okay, so what happens here? What do we say the wavelength is? Shorter. Shorter. And the frequency? Frequency. As more? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about energy. (laughs) (laughs) Which one expends more energy? The shorter wavelength or higher higher frequency? Shoot, it's like hurry and decide, man, my arm here. Okay, so lower frequency. What about this? What kind of energy? Lower energy. Higher frequency. Higher energy. Are those inversely or directly? Directly. Whoo. Okay, awesome. All right. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so which ones did we say was thank you? Which ones did we say were inversely related? Okay, does everybody got that? Frequency and wavelength are inversely related. And what was directly related? Energy and frequency. Okay, so if frequency and wavelength are inversely related. That means one goes up, the other goes down. So that when you multiply them together, you get a constant. One goes down, the other one goes up. So that when you multiply them together, you get that same constant. Ah, so what would that constant be? It's the speed of light! (laughs) Exactly! Hey, is that so cool or what? All right, so it's the speed of light. So one of the equations that we'll be using a lot is C is equal to wavelength times the frequency. Now, what are the units of the speed of light? Meters per second. So guess what wavelength has to be in? Wavelength has to be in meters. And frequency is always per per seconds, right? Okay, so let's say I had, um, so if I gave you any one of, if I, if I gave you two of these, you could tell me what the missing one is, right? Okay. So well, you always know the speed of light because that's a constant and it's on the back of that periodic table. So if I gave you one of these, you could certainly get the other, couldn't you? So for example, if you had 465 nanometers, 465 nanometers, and I want to know, hey, what nanometers? What is that? Nanometers, that's less a wavelength. So I want to know what is the frequency? Could you solve it? Sure. So frequency, frequency is equal to what? How would you solve this? Okay, so speed of light divided by what? 465 nanometers? Mm, I can't be nanometers, can I? No, this is meters. Can't do that. You can't divide meters by nanometers. So guess what you have to convert that to? You have to convert it to meters. So remember, one meter is 10 to the ninth nanometers. Okay, so when I can do the conversion, this is 4.65 times 10 to the minus seventh meters. And so frequency comes out to be 6.45 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Now you remember we said frequency can be hertz or we could say per seconds, exactly. So you can do this kind of a calculation, right? So these are one of the calculations that we're doing in chapter six. Not so bad, right? Okay, so does this make sense? You guys can do this one? So that's how frequency and wavelength are related together through the constant. Now we said that electromagnetic radiation consists of light. Okay, but there's other things besides light. There's radio waves, infrared waves, microwaves, x-rays, UV rays, gamma rays. And light is actually consists of the visible region. Light is a small thing. It's, very, it's the visible region. It's very small. You know, light consists of the colors, right? And each one of those colors has its own wavelength. Okay, so you guys know the order of colors? What's the way to remember that? You guys remember that? Roy, G, Biv. Yeah, Roy, red, orange, yellow. Roy, G, G is green. What's Biv? B is blue, I, 
indigo, V, violet. Okay, so that's the color region. Now let's talk about the wavelength. The biggest wavelengths, the biggest wavelengths would be what? Radio frequency or gamma rays? Radio. Does everybody see that? Really big waves. So big waves means what kind of frequency? Low frequency. Okay, so low frequency, big wavelength is radio waves. So gamma rays then, gamma rays have a very small wavelength. So what does that tell you about the frequency? Very high, isn't it? All right, so now let's talk about the energy. Which is greater energy? So thinking about frequency, which is greater energy? Gamma rays or radio waves? Gamma rays, that makes sense, right? So gamma rays and x-rays are high energy. Radio waves are low energy. Okay, so this is the electromagnetic spectrum. You do need to know all the different types of the electromagnetic spectrum. You don't need to memorize the wavelength, but you need to understand comparative, like which is greater and all of that. For example, if I said, which has greater wavelength, x-rays or microwaves? What would you say? Microwave. Microwaves. Okay, which has... Um, greater energy, infrared or UV? UV? UV. Do you see how we did that? Okay, it's easy to do it looking at the chart, right? <laughs> yeah, are we going to have that chart? No, we're not. So we need to know that the order of frequency or wavelength and energy. If you know one, you could get all the others, right? So you can remember it in order of wavelength, and then you'd be able to figure out energy and frequency that went with that. Does that make sense? Okay, notice that in the spectrum, infrared is red is close to the infrared. That would make sense, right? And over there, you've got your UV rays, and guess what's next to the UV rays? Mm, violet. <laughs> so it's violet and then ultraviolet. That would make sense, right? Okay. So do know the electromagnetic spectrum and how they're related to each other to be able to answer those kinds of questions. Does that make sense? All right, so that's the different types of electromagnetic radiation. And with electromagnetic radiation, now that we understand light, we're going to start working our way through to our current model. So right now we're starting off with what we normally think of as classical physics where matter has mass and light is energy without mass, right? So energy is a wave, mass is a particle, and that's how we think of it. And we're going to work through our uh, examples here, observations or experiments, till we get to our quantum mechanic, mo mechanic model, quantum current quantum model. And we do need to know all those observations and experiments and who did them and all that kind of stuff. All right, so we'll pick up with that after the break. So we'll take our break and be back at 1, and then we'll work our way through that one. You like this a lot better? Yeah, it's more like... No, it's more like, hey, this is a wave. 